God wasn't asking him, think about this now, God was not asking Joshua to believe something that he hadn't already seen to be true in his own life. When he says, I want you to remember that I'm going to be with you just like I was with Moses, is he not sort of indicating that I'm going to be with you in ways that you have seen before? For me, as I think about that, that that means that you and I are never going to be compelled by the promise of God's presence until we can look back and see a pattern of God's presence in our life. Too often, we are afraid and discouraged because we are not taking stock in the presence of God as he has shown himself faithful in our lives in the past. We are forgetting that. We are overlooking that. And the promise that God will be with us isn't just a promise about the future. It's a, it's a promise about all the ways that he has, in fact, been faithful to us up to this point. And I think some of us need to take some inventory. I mean, how long has it been? There was an old hymn that we used to sing, and I could sing it for you, but God called me to preach, not to sing. And so uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that for you. I'm not even going to do it for you later, like in the lobby or somewhere else. Just don't even try. There's an old song uh, that talks about just counting your many blessings, right? Count your blessings one by one. Count your many blessings. And for us, If we're going to believe in the presence of God, if we're going to look ahead and see the obstacles and be challenged to believe that God will be with us, we're going to need to take inventory of all the ways that he has been present with us and all the ways that he has been present in the lives of God's people. And we're going to need to borrow some of that confidence as we go into the next battle, as we go into those next set of circumstances. We need to believe that he has been present. Unfortunately for me, when I'm challenged with an obstacle, I'm not giving God enough credit for the ways that he has provided for me up to this point. I'm just failing to be grateful. And I don't want that to be true of us. You're never, again, never going to be compelled by the idea of God's presence with us, the promise of his presence. If we don't take stock in, if we don't take inventory, if we don't look back and remember the pattern of his presence in our life. Can you look back? Can you see ways that God has provided for you? You need to take some time to allow this to be a a, a strong enough realization that you experience something in your own heart, a movement towards God in your own heart because you're remembering again all the ways that God has protected you, all the ways that he's provided for you. You and I need to take stock in that, need to take inventory. And I think that's gonna bolster our confidence in the presence of God as we continue to move forward. So, I think, I think practically for us, uh, as we think about the presence of God and, and, and being compelled by the presence of God, I think uh, related to the point that I made earlier, if because of Jesus, God will never leave us or forsake us, then you and I are going to need to believe that he has never left us in the past and that he never uh, has forsaken us in the past. You can't just believe that he's never going to do that in the future. If deep in your core you believe he has done that in the past, though. I don't think that this is an exercise that you should necessarily be doing on your own, although I think there should be some personal reflection. I think you need to be in community or at least with a counselor, but you should be unpacking all the reasons why you feel like God has not been present, has not been faithful, why he, you think maybe he was not, uh, uh, why maybe he had abandoned you or had forsaken you. And you need to unpack those stories in a safe environment, preferably be with the counselor, to begin to see that no, God had never abandoned you, that he had never forsaken you, that he has always been with you. He never promised that we wouldn't go through any hardship. He had only promised that he would be there with us to go through it together. And we need to look back on all of those things and unpack those scenarios and reimagine those scenarios again. And then imagine that God was being merciful, tender towards us, loving towards us, present with us in that moment to comfort and even present with us now to heal us from that. This is an exercise that we should be going through so that we can remember, be reminded, or just realize for the first time that God has never forsaken us. It's on that basis, with that kind of evidence, that we can look forward and say, yeah, he's not going to forsake me. He's not going to abandon me. 
So that's what I mean by actually taking stock in the presence of God, looking back at the pattern of God. And it's on that basis that, that, that Joshua and the people are going to need to be strong and courageous.